What a crazy week it has been, eh? Uh, from that game against Villarreal, from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer last Sunday, and now Ralph Ragnick in the last 24, 48 hours. It's been absolutely mad. And Sunday now against Chelsea is going to be Michael Carrick's big opportunity on the biggest of stages against a world-class manager to show he has got some capability. I was surprised with how United played in that second half against Villarreal. Pleasantly surprised. We were poor for 60. Last 30, it seemed like we knew what we were doing. But who is Carrick going to start in this game, which is a massive opportunity for him, the last game before Ralph Ragnick comes in? I am excited for that. I'm going to run through my predicted 11. I'm going to take a look at the team news that we know before the game. And you can let me know who you think should be starting on Sunday, what is going to be a hell of a tough game for Manchester United. Let's get straight into this one. Drop a like on the video. And subscribe if you're new to United People's TV. But let's take a look at the team news that Carrick has been speaking about. So first and foremost, we can see that there are a few players who might not play. We've got Luke Shaw, Varane, Pogba, Cavani, Greenwood. They were all out of the game against Villarreal. Now, Maguire, as we know, he is suspended because of that ridiculous red card he got against Watford. Uh, so who's going to start in defence? There are plenty of players that we don't really position, sorry, that we don't really know who's going to play where. I'm going to take a look at my predicted 11 now, and there's a few positions I would say are, are, pretty, are pretty damn set. But other than that, there's a lot of question marks. Let's get straight into this one. This is the team I'm going to put out that I think is definitely going to start. I think De Gea is definitely starting in goal. Wan-Bissaka, McTominay and Fred in midfield. McFred? McTominay and Fred in, in midfield? I call him McField. McFred <laughs> in midfield. There you go. Got it third time. And I think it'll be Bruno as the number 10, Rashford on the left, Sancho on the right, and Ronaldo up front. I think they're the guaranteed starters in this game. And then there's question marks. And as you can see, the back four is looking pretty thin. Will Luke Shaw start? Now, Luke Shaw, we know he went off with a bit of a head problem. He's been off a couple of times with head problems now. I personally don't think he's going to be risked because of that. I don't know whether it's a risk thing. I think I think the medical team might have ruled him out. So I'm going to put Tedez, Tedez down there at the left-back position. I still really question whether or not Tedez is actually that good a footballer for Manchester United. Seriously. Alex Tellez on that left-back position, he really hasn't impressed me that much, if I'm being completely honest, since he came to join Manchester United. Maybe that'll be different under Ralph Ragnick, eh? Let's see what goes on there. But, I mean, Luke Shaw, remember, was a, a player who Ragnick previously criticised. I think it was back in 2020, he said that Manchester United looked like they needed a new left-back. Obviously, since then, Shaw's gone on a fantastic upward curve and then gone on a fantastic downward curve, which he's still in at the moment. But I don't think Luke Shaw will play in this game. But the centre-back partnership is where the biggest questions are. And for me, it's pretty straightforward simply because of who we have available. And that's pretty much only Lindelof and Eric Bailly. It's not a partnership that's going to fill anyone with any major confidence and hope. But let's be honest, did Maguire and Varane really fill you with hope? That's a key area that Radnick's got to improve on. But Varane, he's still out injured. Maguire is suspended for this game. So who else are you going to play there? Seriously, Phil Jones? Is he Phil Jones, Phil Jones, I think, travelled to Villarreal. I don't even think he's part of the Champions League squad. I have no idea why that happened. That was a bit weird. But I think it's going to be Lindelof and Bay. Varane obviously won't be rushed. But even if he is fit, I don't think he's actually available at all. I think Varane's just out. And I, well, Maguire's an idiot and got himself that red card. Such a ridiculous red card for a captain, a centre-back to get. Just losing the ball in front of your own box under not that much pressure and then just diving in for a second yellow. Unreal from him, really. But that's the back four for me. I think it's going to be De Gea in goal with Tellez, Wambasaka, Bai, and Lindelof. It's not exactly a back five that's going to fill any United fans with any sort of confidence that we can repeat the clean sheet we got against Villarreal. But that is who I would start in the back five. And I'll speak about the midfield next. Before I do move on, I want to say a big shout out to One Football for helping support United People's TV throughout the last few months. If you haven't already downloaded the app, you know where to go right now. Head down to the link in the description, download it. First of all, it's free and everyone loves free things. Uh, second of all, it's actually a decent app, more than decent. All the latest Manchester United news, match coverage, pre-game build-up, all the match stats after the game, all the latest transfer news. It's all in one place. That's why it's called One Football. So use the link in the description, download it for free. It will support United People's TV. It will support One Football and everyone's a winner. But let's move on to talk about the midfield. So let's get straight into this midfield and big up to one football, as I said there. Uh, this midfield, yeah, it leaves me scratching my head because there's not really much I can say about it anymore that nobody already doesn't know, right? McTominay and Fred, 
I don't want to see that working underneath Ralph Randnick. I want to see Van der Beek in there. I want to see Fred in there. Fred, both of those players, I think, will really thrive in a high-pressing system. Uh, McTominay and Fred. Will Fred play? Fred twisted his ankle against Villarreal. He might not be fit to play this game. I think he'll probably be put in that midfield because we don't really have that many options. Who could you play there? Of course, you could play... Let's go for it. You could put Nemanja Matic down there. That's an option. You could put Van der Beek down there. You could take both of those off if you really wanted to. McTominay off with Fred off and a midfield duo of Matic and Van der Beek. What do you think about that? I don't really think there's any chance of that playing. We've seen how horribly exposed Matic can get. And again, if there's players that are... If we're lining up players in this in this squad who aren't going to thrive in this sort of Ragnik system that's going to come in, I'm going to put Matic as one of those as well. And I think he'll be shifted out very, very soon. But I'm going to put them there and I'm going to put Bruno here. Bruno, as we all know, the issue for him is when he becomes a secondary striker rather than a third man in midfield. Bruno, hold your discipline in this game, my friend. As we saw in that set, that 30-minute cameo against Villarreal, mustard. He really is top draw, top level player. I can't wait to see what he does under Ragnik. I think he's going to thrive in that system. But somebody who I'm dead excited to see against Chelsea, no matter how much pessimism I'm going into this game with, that's Jaden Sancho. Eh? Jaden Sancho was absolutely superb against Villarreal. Not only just the goal, but the overall performance from him was fantastic. But the goal itself was great as well. And he linked up very, very well, actually, with Donny van der Beek. So maybe it will be a bit of a shame if he's not in this team instead of McTominay like that. Maybe a lot of you would prefer to see that. Yeah, I think I would prefer to see it as well. I just can't really see it against Chelsea on Sunday. Uh, it's a game, I think that game against Villarreal was sort of an, a slight insight into maybe what would have happened and continue to happen under Carrick. Keeping it tight for 60 minutes, bringing on the subs, and United then sort of turning the tempo up a little bit for the last 30 minutes. And it worked. It was a game plan, and it worked against Villarreal for sure. But I don't think the same thing could work against Chelsea, although Ben Chilwell is out, I believe, for like four, five, six weeks. And Kante, it looks like he might be missing, and that's an important one. But they've still got options inside that midfield. Let's see what they do. But for me, Sancho will start on the right wing. There's no way he doesn't start after Villarreal, surely. Rashford, he'll start out on the left-hand side. He's had an indifferent season since he's come back. After his long-term absence, he's not really settled back in. But I think, again... If you're looking at players that are going to thrive in this Ragnik system, you're going to be looking towards Marcus Rashford as well. And of course, everybody will have questions about whether Cristiano Ronaldo can do it. And everybody has those questions every single week. And every single week, seemingly, Ronaldo proves them wrong. Well, certainly in the Champions League every week. Not so much in the Premier League, consistency-wise. But United, he's been left isolated far too often, man. We know that. I and mean, he's not got the service. That's one good thing about Alex Tellers for sure. If you see Ronaldo getting towards here, obviously the Chelsea have got a very decent defence. Uh, they've hardly conceded that many at all under Tuchel. But you get Tellers into these overlapping positions with Rashford and firing in the crosses over there to Ronaldo. Maybe we can see Ronaldo leap and jump on the end of one of those. But that's definitely a bonus of Tellers' games is, is whipped in deliveries from the left. So I'll be, I'll be interested to see whether or not he can do that. But I'll be completely honest, I'm not going into this game with really that much confidence. Chelsea spanking Juve 4-0 during the week. Scoring with youth players. What are you doing, Chelsea? That's not your way. Calm down. Stay in your lane. Chelsea looked very, very good under Tuchel. Uh, I'm excited to see what Ragnik can do and sort of how he can get us towards that pressing system that Tuchel uses to effect so well. And, and Jurgen Klopp has obviously done to effect so well at Liverpool, but both of them learned it from Ragnik himself. So I want to see how he can implement it inside this squad. I want to see Manchester United go for it. Look, Carrick needs to use this game as an opportunity because he is, well, he's manager of Manchester United away against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge in the Premier League. Opportunities don't get that much bigger to prove yourself. And I, Carrick, as I said, he earned a couple of stripes, in my opinion, uh, against Federal. Things I didn't expect him to do, th things I didn't expect United to do, and it worked. And Manchester United won the game and we kept a clean sheet. Fair enough. I wasn't expecting that, if I'm being completely honest. And I am expecting to get pumped against Chelsea. I think they will control the game. I think they will dominate the game. I think Lukaku is probably... Is it Lukaku back and fit? I'm not sure. If he is, bet on him to score for sure. But I want to see Manchester United really getting the ball to Jadon Sancho. I want to see Wan-Bissaka actually operating as a bloody fullback and getting their overlapping runs and helping Sancho so Sancho doesn't get doubled up on. Otherwise, it's going to be very easy to stop Sancho playing. But who would you start... What would your would you stick with a four two three one? I think it's guaranteed, isn't it, that we stick to the four two three one? 
It's whether or not you think Fred and McTominay will play in midfield, whether or not you think Fred's going to be fit to play, or maybe you would start Van der Beek. I don't think Van der Beek played that great against Villarreal, but I think his link-up play with Sancho was probably one of the highlights of the game. You can see how they bounced off each other, playing quick one-touch football. It was nice. Again, looking forward to seeing that in the Ragnik system. But that's my predicted 11 for the game. Sancho on the right, Rash on the left up front, Ronaldo, of course, Bruno holding in the middle, hopefully as a third midfielder rather than a supporting striker with, with I'm going to go for um, Tomine and Fred. I don't, I don't think Van der Beek will start, even if I wanted him to, I don't think he will. And a back four of wan and Tellez as the fullbacks and Bai and Lindelof. Who would get in your team? Who do you want to see start? And how do you think United will play in this? As I said, this should be last, Carrick's last game as interim manager. That's what interim managers do. They come in for a couple of games, a few games, and that's what United have done. So acted a lot faster than I think any of us expected us to. But what do you think is going to happen on Sunday? Is there any chance that United don't get pumped? You let me know what you think in the comments below. Take it easy.